no, you should be you should be good. Yeah. No, yeah. you're good. Uh, so we have uh, we're going to introduce uh, uh, Bright and Jacob um, at the appointed meeting spot and get them uh, get them back to where they need to be here. Uh, and so we are going to. Um, I think it was outside the city, but we'll we'll put you in the city. Yeah, it was it was it was outside the city. Okay. Um. Interesting. Nothing played on load. Unless I didn't drag the bookmarker. I did not. I'm a professional. There we go. <laughs> now play on load. Yeah, there's music. Okay. <clears throat> it, Derek, it's only fair. <laughs> it's only fair, fair considering the, uh, the, the Metal Man Choo Choo driver. <laughs> I accept this punishment. Wait. We earn our reputations, Maddie. That's we right. We earn our reputations. <laughs> hey, I need another sound check. I'm sorry. Uh, you are fine. Fantastic. Okay. Good news. Good news. You can reply to this message. <laughs> um. All right. So outside this, uh, outside the city, um, of course, the, uh, the with some clouds in the sky, you see that this uh, unnatural fire, even the black light. Not as in, like, ultraviolet that we know, but, like, a black light, just I'll let you imagine it, is reflecting off of the clouds on this otherwise nice uh, spring evening. Uh, the sounds of the city is not at full hum compared to what it would normally be, but there's lights, there's people who are out and about. Um, again, no murderous screams even when you when you leave the dockside, Jacob. Uh, you make your way through town to the appointed spot that uh, bright uh, thrust into your brain and a, a loud a feedback. And, uh, there's our, there's our setup. You two can interact. You see Jacob as he returns. He is covered in what looks like mushroom gore. And it, it seems exasperated. He's got a bandaged hand. He's you know, walking. His hammer is slung around his wrist. He's getting, like, barely standing. He just kind of starts to walk towards you. Oh, uh, I ran up, uh, so I see you made dinner, and also something else must have happened. What, what happened? Oh no. I've confirmed my suspicions. Which, which ones? You have a lot of suspicions. And I'm very good at finding answers. That being said... I can confirm that the individuals who were purchasing produce at one Mr. Mordent's yeah, yeah, market. No, no way. Babylon 5. Oh, Mr. Uh, Morden. No. Okay. Mr. Sorry. Morden's the. No, uh, I think you have to be while. Canadian. <laughs> 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 you about to cross some mere lines. <laughs> uh, was distributing produce. In that produce, the things that we encountered, the cat-like brain, you know, ball things, um, made infiltration into the town, and we currently have an infestation. Oh. How many more? We know only two of these things have not. Well, two of these things didn't get sold. The rest did. Presumably, the other, the two corpses, did in fact buy said mushroom. Oh. Okay, so that's that's kind of kind of new information that we didn't have. Um, so, uh, one of them already got the merchant. The one of the corpses was identified as a Mr. Morden, who ended up having a entire, who ended up having the <laughs> stall that it was being sold from. <laughs> I dispatched two of the hair creatures. The rest of the gods are now 
dealing with the produce situation, trying to find as much as they can from Green Shield. Hey. And go ahead. So that's that's pretty strange. This reminds me a lot of some things that happened to me back in Oct. I don't know, it could just be a coincidence, but like sometimes I would try to cook dinner and like the dinner would fight back sometimes. Um, but it was usually just me. It didn't usually happen to anyone else. So why is it this I don't entire know. thing has to do with me, you, and dealing with funny mushrooms? Anyway, that being said, I have procured well it cost the amount um, of dust required. Oh good. Here let it me clean some of this up for you. And I'm assuming, like, as he tries to end up, no, 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 he casts spells, like, trying, you can hear the, the, the screaming in his head, right, no, what did you make me forget, what did you make me forget, what did I just say, what it was, how long has it been, what did, what did she make me do? Oh, it's, it's just to clean up your outfit, you're covered in mushrooms. You should, you should be much cleaner now. A magical squeegee was taken to your face. Okay then, let us continue onward. Okay. Get Mr. Ashir Mibimlo the Zephos the third the requisite diamond dust. It may have taken a spill. A uh, spill? Yes. Um, okay, so so they say not to cry over spilled milk, but I don't think they say that about diamond dust. At this point, I'm going to take our chances. Okay. Well, if Celine doesn't like it, I guess we have to come back. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so let's, it let's go. just kind of looks at you with the widest of eyes when you say we might have to come back. Yeah. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, you just, you know, open your eyes. We'll go wonder by wonder over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride. And then we'll come back. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, uh, a after being magically squeegee, Jacob, you hop up on Jasper, uh, Bright is, uh, Bright is, uh, ready to go, and, um, through an endless, uh, starry night, you, uh, you... An endless diamond sky. I'm sorry. So, so oh, don't no! drop the diamond dust. The sack has because... a leak in it! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that part because I knew it would jinx it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry, I... <laughs> Jacob was very fastidious in making sure this this container would be absolutely sealed shut. Um, so, <laughs> um, what, Try Ki me, Kitty Lee Bird? What, shame on me for what? What are you shaming me for, Kitty Bird? Come on, no, I can take it from chat. All right, while you're typing that up. So yes, uh, you fly uh, the the amount of time back. Um, oh, not getting okay. <laughs> I, hey, it's been all since I've seen Aladdin. Uh, that being said, it is uh, it is my favorite uh, Disney cartoon. I think Aladdin, Lion King, and I kind of went down. In my opinion, um, there, there must have been a cat. Nothing else could explain that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was saying goodbye to my like of Disney movies. It just kind of went down, 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 down. Oh. Yeah. That's what I was laughing at. Yep. Okay. There may, there may also that. have been a cat down there. I, I don't know. They, they, they lurk. They're like little, little carpet sharks. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I end up playing a boule, I'm going to use that. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Instead of going underground, they just disappear into carpet. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Sciart. You, you've come at a ridiculous time. Anyway, um, so you fly back. Uh, awkward silence, conversation. Is there anything else before we uh, we have you land? Pardon? No? 
I got nothing to add to this conversation. Yeah, like, I think we, I think we, we said the things we wanted to say on the way out. So hopefully we can just get back pretty quick. So yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, on the way back, uh, you know, the feather's still holding your floof back, so nothing really needs to happen there. Uh, it's a, a beautiful but chilly night uh, up in the sky, 200 feet above. Though you get a great view of everything that's going on around you. Uh, that big burning tower is, uh, you know, magnificently burning. And, um, you know, lights of the city. We are the, now going to cut back over. Um, you know, meanwhile, down the road, more than a piece. I'd say, I'd even say it's a ways away. Uh... Casimir, Selene, and Mordecai were left behind. Jasper has just taken to the sky, ascending to a comfortable cruising altitude of 200 feet. And um, evening is falling. Uh, for any of you out there, by the way, uh, you can read the side RP that happens uh, occasionally between sessions. And this is this is when the conversation between Selene and Mordecai uh, would be taking place in side RP. And... Uh, fortunately enough for that, there's no more monster attacks, at least during the side RP. Uh, though I do want to ask what, what is Casimir doing? Or what are you having done with Casimir? Since Casimir is there, are you just sort of like turning him away? We're just gonna, sit, we're, 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 we're just gonna sit him off to the side and, uh, close his eyes. <laughs> okay, just... Cause it's not like he had, cause it's not like he has any massive they, control over his just island. Just back up. Yes. <laughs> uh, Celine, don't forget to also close Casimir's mouth. He's drooling all over himself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. If he's if he's not participating, then he's not participating. If he's not saying anything, he's not saying anything. Okay, but you yep. also don't want him kind of creepily, silently overhearing your personal conversation. Mordecai, in, during that conversation, was not actually being quiet, so he probably oh, would have heard. Oh, okay. Overheard. All right, then. <laughs> All right. So, well, Casimir, then, uh... uh boy, you, you just you get to overheard. sit here. Yeah, I hope... Boy, speaking of awkward conversations, we're having one 200 feet up and uh, on, uh, a mile away from you, and then there's one happening right here in <laughs> front of you. Um, <laughs> um, very well. Uh, so that conversation happens. Uh, time passes uh, during it. Are you casting your Liamin's Tiny Hut? Are you still walking down the road a piece? Like, do you want to put some distance between you and the and the Bramble? Or do you want to, I don't know, kind of park up against it in, in case of defenses? Or I think what Mordecai would probably wait to do is, to, is uh, set up some, like, because they don't want to go too far. Because if we go too far, nobody's going to find us. So we just stay where we are kind of set up camp set up a campfire if there needs to be heat or anything like that but he's not going to actually ritual cast the hut until everybody's ready to sleep okay yeah because it's just a it's a hard eight hours it's a hard eight yeah, hours, it's a yeah. eight, a hard eight hours yeah. okay uh are you making any kind of a campfire bonfire anything um signal fire or are you just basking in the cold springtime night a campfire would be nice. Yeah, I mean, I could start one with Dalmaturgy, because Spark. Sure. Okay, yeah, you, you can find some, uh, I mean, th th there's some old wood that died over the winter, lots of grasses and such. It, it, uh, it'd be a little bit of a, a wet fire. It's going to take a while for the Thaumaturgy to, uh, to start getting some of this stuff to catch, especially because of the, the thunderstorm and whatnot recently. But after a while, you're, you're going to be able to, to do so. And, um... Well, it might be an easier interaction for you all. Is there anything that you would like to go and do? Do you want to you want to try and hunt at night? Do you want to just be warm and cozy by a campfire? Do you want to have more conversation? Uh, w anything with Casimir? Any research? You do uh -huh. have you do have the the two uh, the two corpses. One of them has uh, some mushrooms growing in its empty head, and uh, I am not doing anything with that because that spooks me. It's not gonna happen. Uh, I, I will. I, I will do. Oh, so, I will do some research. Okay. I'll, I'll do some research. Pulling out my notebook and taking some notes because you know it, it's not every day that you get to see someone with their intellect stolen. So you might as well just take some notes, right? Sure. Um, You're weird. 
Uh, alright, is this- Oh my, what gave you that idea? Just commentating. Are... <laughs> Mordecai, are you wanting to contribute <laughs> to the experimentation by, you know, like, no. having it lift its hand or roll over or something? Nope. Okay. I had enough of that in the desert. Ain't gonna do that no more. Okay. All right, uh, Celine. Um, well, I'm gonna put you in a, a little a little skill challenge here, um, as we're having a multidisciplinary uh, note taking session. Can um, do. So go ahead and uh, begin with a nature, uh, a nature check. Nature. Not good at it, but it's fine. Eight. Yep. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, now go ahead and make an ar arcana. And arcana. Better. Okay. Uh, 12 on arcana, 8 on nature. Uh, and uh, now I would... Uh, now I would like you to make a, med a medicine check. Medicine, which I am good at. 16. Although not that good at that. Those are all 8s. <laughs> eight, 8 plus 4. 8 plus 8. Wow. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the Chinese would call me really lucky. Um... But yeah, yeah, I know. She's hark. She's bapping my nose and the cameras with her tail. Uh, she's being very happy right now. Uh, all right, uh, and uh, let's uh, let's wrap things up with a uh, a religion check, and uh, and we'll see what you end up with. Religion check. Hopefully, it's better than an eight. Yeah, it I'm is not better than an eight. I'm not hallucinating glowing lines, am I? No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Would you like Celine to? No. All right, you're lost. All right, so Celine, you're over there studying the uh, the two corpses. Uh, you can compare the two. Um, one of them, the one with mushrooms uh, growing uh, sort of out of its uh, open uh, head headspace. Um, the mushrooms share a similarity in shape and color with Mordecai. And currently, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there, there's no real uh, you, you've not really seen this species before it there. You're just noticing very topical uh, details um, in thinking. A little I'm not bit really more, a plant person <clears throat> in thinking a little bit more about it. There's there's got to be some sort of magic involved, though. This is probably a type of magic that is outside your sphere. Um. Because divide the, and death is my thing. The the corpse the corpse reacted in a sense to Mordecai, and Mordecai just said no. Um, however, there was a rather touching moment that you two shared, and uh, and it just sort of like rolled over and spooned the corpse that doesn't have mushrooms, but it hasn't done anything since that point in time. Uh, so there is some kind of a. a I link. wonder if I could animate it. Um, well, uh, we, we, time. We, can, we, we can conduct spells after the, uh, after this here, um, with medicine, um, the, the corpse, I, it's certainly a dead body. Uh, oh, it, yeah. it, it shouldn't, it, it shouldn't have, uh, I mean the, the brain, the central nervous system, it shouldn't really be able to, to do some of the things that it's doing or that it did, I should say. Um, but it, it does not, it's, there's no breathing. Uh, no pulse. Uh, there's. It's just. It's sitting there. Um, with religion, uh, this is. <clears throat> hmm. In the wake of uh, of Weejas, where uh, death is often found, uh, there are other entities that uh, that come and also partake of the corpses. Uh, of the people who've fallen or come before, whether they've been buried or if they're lost in a cave or whatnot. Uh, there are many creatures that uh, seem to feast upon dead or dying matter, and one of those is, for sure, mushrooms. Um, and while mushrooms aren't exactly a primary uh, source of worship uh, or consideration for a follower of Weejas, um, they're... There's enough of a perhaps a coincidence here that you have Mordecai, who has turned into a mushroom elemental. I, I don't know how you'd want to describe this or call it, uh, but he has taken on these these uh, qualities, and uh, through uh, through some spores, 
uh, seem to be able to have these mushrooms inhabit a dead body. Uh, and while the, the soul truly has passed on, in your opinion, uh, without conducting any more magical experiments, uh, a semblance of control uh, has been given to the one corpse. Like like my uh, my animate dead, for example? Like breathing false life? So yeah. that it, wa it can walk, it, it can walk, it can do things that bodies do, but it can't speak or do soul based stuff well it it hasn't tried it more hasn't tried it or had it try to do a bunch of extra stuff however stuff. your possession of a body is a lot more difficult to sense because you're more of a um you're a remote control that doesn't have an antenna mordecai's yeah. corpse has antenna in the shape of these uh colorful kind of smooth mushrooms that uh, share his uh, shape and coloration. Um, and so there could be a similarity, but th this would be uh, a, an interesting field of research for you, especially where this is, uh, maybe if this is a fey power of some kind, let alone the fey being able to incorporate with a vampire, um, which they, yeah. they, they seem to have some kind of a pact. You know, they weren't necessarily aggressive towards each other, um, but this could be a development, mm. uh, and this is also a way then for the mushrooms to interact, uh, well, the mushrooms interacting with a vampire with the dead. is dead, but uh, but yeah. here we have a, a mushroom vampire uh, who was able to make a corpse part at least partially respond to his desires mm -hmm. uh, by implanting mushrooms in it. Yeah. Hey, Mordecai, Celine. Try and command that corpse to stand up. I don't want to. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Please! Why? I don't want- because, I don't want well, thralls. Please. No, I- I- Look, this is a massive development. This means that the Fae are somehow able to interact with dead bodies in a similar fashion to the way that I breathe the semblance of false life into corpses and animate them. I if they like have this power, anyway. we need to know. <laughs> it's more a matter of we need to know that they're capable of this. So I need to know that this isn't just a one-off. Uh... Know, thy, know thy enemy. I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, to be fair, I don't particularly like it all that much either. But... Progress stops for no man, or woman, or undead, as the case may be. Okay. Uh... so... <laughs> I just try and mentally, for at first, Try and command it to do something. Uh, sure. Uh, give me one Just moment. Just sit up. Um. Oh, I will add that as the as the sun has been going down, uh, parts of you have been uh having a very beautiful, very faint, almost like a like candlelight uh glow to them. Your your oh, skin look. is kind of like a a, a living, uh, a lit well a living. Uh, oh oh oh! Look, you buy like a stain, S. stained glass window. That's cool. Notes down. Fey mushrooms tend towards bioluminescence. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So yeah. Um. I'm just commanding this thing to sit up mentally first, not verbally first. Okay. Uh, as you do this, uh, you think mentally. Um, there isn't... Uh, nothing seems to... Uh, nothing seems to happen immediately. Um, though, Mordecai, as you're thinking this and you're, and you're looking, in your peripheral vision... You see that there was, uh, there's kind of like a very fine dust that is given off of you and kind of like wafts over uh, to the uh, to the mushroom corpse. 
Um, and, uh, it stands up. Okay. All right. And, and, okay. and once that happens, once that kind of, uh, that dust settles, um, it's not a voice or a language, but rather just, um, a feeling, a primal feeling inside of you of... What shall I do, Father? <laughs> Mordecai don't like that. <laughs> the, 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 so the, the words are a feeling of familiarity and of uh, dutiful service to someone seen as a superior. I don't like that it did that because I poofed. Yes. Dust. And after the dust settled, you get this telepathic vibe. I continue to instruct it to stand up. Mm -hmm. I'm reluctant to do so, but I still do it. Okay. And Zillian is taking notes like... Your desire. And it stands up. The inside of its head glows faintly from the mushrooms that are also bioluminescent. Uh, um, mm, mm. This is very familiar to what happened in the desert. Paint the lines, what? cut the men. Paint the lines, mm -hmm. cut the men. Mordecai. Mordecai. Mm -hmm. You're not Jade. Calm down. Mm, I'm, mm. <laughs> the okay. thing is, my thought is this, it's very obvious that you gain some of the powers of whatever blood you consume. I mean, that much is obvious. I've basically felt like something's changed every time I drink from something different. Jacob, for instance. I've drank his blood before. <clears throat> you know what that did? I felt pretty, pretty damn strong. <sighs> He's a tough man. One thing I will one thing I will give the investigator is that he is a fortuitous man who can swing that uh warhammer of his with quite a large amount of strength. The way you're saying that just sounds like Anyway. No, Mordecai. Before <laughs> you think that. <laughs> hmm. So, and, and drinking your blood kind of gave me similar abilities with controlling the dead. Or well, I am tapped in to the powers of death, and that includes undeath. And when you drank the sand dog's blood, you became, uh... <laughs> that was similar to the way that I felt after Jacob's. You became a beast of a man. Not in mind, but in body. Um, and you drank the, 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 the fae liquid. Which has turned you into this. Mm-hmm. And you'll be, you're able to control the corpse, mainly because it has these mushrooms implanted so that's creating a link somehow so what that mean what that means to me is that the fey have now developed a way to seed corpses with some kind of mushroom some kind of magical mushroom to turn them into thralls we already we already we already knew that they were able to transform people Mm -hmm. But now they've figured out a way to take control of corpses. Don't you think that that's a development in the reverse? That that was something that they probably developed first before they could transform people? No, actually. That seems my working, logic. With, working with a dead body is actually much, much harder than working with a live one. A soul is a mutable form of energy. A corpse doesn't have a soul. 
A corpse is simply flesh. Yes, they are a thing that exist. Mordecai, are you telling me that you do not believe in souls? I mean, not really. <sighs> oh boy. How do I explain this? You're going to explain it very religiously, and I'm not a religious person, so I guess that's kind no. of... Um... No, 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 not in a religious context, in a philosophical context. Okay. Tell me, Mordecai. What separates a man from a beast? Intellect. Some would say that. But if you strip away the empathy from a person, what is a man but a beast? He still has intellect, but he feels no empathy towards his fellow man and would be more than happy to kill them without a second thought because it's simply the logical thing to do. Okay. So, whilst man has intellect over beast, normally, there are some beasts out there that are smarter than man. What truly separates a man from beast? Like you said, empathy. Yes, but it's more than just empathy. It's self-awareness. And to put it more basely, the ability to utilize will to change the world around them, to interact with the world around them, not necessarily on the physical side of things. I mean, you should know this better than anyone, Mordecai. You are a social man, one who lives his life in the limelight, speaking to people, and I'm sure over your years you've gotten very good at it. Anyway, yeah. I haven't done so much lately. No, things have changed, but it is the physical act of speaking words and the mental act of forming the speeches to be pleasant, but it is the soul that adds feeling. It is the soul that actually puts the punch behind the words, for without it, words are simply that, words. Things are simply that thing. A soul is what makes the information mean something. Maybe. It is something that I know to be true, and it is the hill that I will stand on until the day that I die. <laughs> and even in death. Yeah, you stand on a lot of hills. I do stand on a lot of hills. I'm a very spiritual person, what can I say? My spiritualism has costed me, sure. But as I told you, Mordecai, I can't really afford to be wrong. So I don't make a habit of making wrong decisions. But, back onto the topic at hand, this makes for a very interesting development. I wonder if it's something that the vampires help them develop. I don't know. Flesh is, I... flesh is, easy, flesh is easy to bend, a soul is not. Not to mention their transformation required an outside influence. A fade to actually go in and possess them. The crystal was simply just a catalyst for the possession, as we found out in Browby in the mine. So this this says to me, this says to me many things. That our enemies grow stronger by the day. 
and that our world is mixing more and more and more with the others that exist. And quite frankly, it's an exceptionally terrifying prospect because it could only be, well, even 12 months from now when we find out that uh, our world isn't what it was anymore. Everything else is blended into it and it's just a mishmash of everything. The tower's appearance is been exceptionally alarming to this possibility to me. Same thing with the kinds of things we've seen from the Fae. With the kinds of things we've seen from the vampires. With the kinds of things that we've seen from the Fomorians. With the dragons we encountered. This world is changing. It's less it's changing, changing and more... It's less changing and more... the infinite number of fragments of this world that exist are now collapsing in on each other. Because something's gone on that has made them... How do I put this? Something is drawing them together. And eventually all that, that will be left is... A pit of nothingness and entropy. The fan, the vampires, and all of that other stuff is meant to destroy the world. What are we talking? What What are you talking about? What I'm talking about, Mordecai, is they are a sign uh, that. They're a sign that everything is beginning to draw to an end. An end. An end. For what is the end of everything but nothingness? As you are by the campfire uh, waxing religiously, <laughs> philosophically, existentially. Philosophically. Yeah. Uh, Casimir, uh, Casimir's ear emits an occasional... That's weird. Yeah. It's I just Peggy soon. Look, as soon as I have the diamond dust, I'll get Peggy Sue out of there and I'll heal him. So it's fine. But... One end to everything is that everything becomes one, and then none. History has shown that things. Yeah. History has shown that things grow further and further, and have things have grown further and further and further apart. A good example is the Fomorians used to walk this world, and then they were banished, mm. separated from the prime material. Dragons used to fly through the skies and were killed or banished, as the case may be. The Fae and the vampires used to walk and float and whatever else that vampires and Fae do. I know, I know there are stories that vampires can turn into bats and mist. They have wings I've never sometimes. Tried that. Maybe something to plan on later. But they used to walk this earth, and they disappeared. Went to ground, it sounds like. They went to ground. They separated themselves. But now everything's coming back to a core. It started from a core. It grew to a web. And now everything's collapsing back in. Everything's beginning to return. And because it's all at once... This is going to be chaos. Absolute. Minimum. It's going to be chaos. 
It'll be a chaos unlike which this world has ever known. I don't like thinking about this stuff simply because it's too big. It might it it seems it seems too big, but unfortunately, we are the ones who have to think about it because there are very few other people out there who will. And the people who do think about it, well, you've seen what happens when you've seen what happens to people when they peer beyond the veil. Of what should and shouldn't be known. We've seen it. From your ramblings in the desert, you've also probably seen it. Try that. Mordecai, as you think, your 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 skin, such as it is, kind of softly glows in different different colored patches. Mm -hmm. Right like to a lesser extent, extent to seen it, considering, uh, you know. She decided to go and knock on his front door. That was probably a bad idea. I don't quite know. Frankly, quite frankly, I wouldn't say it's the worst idea in the world. You don't think that any, contacting any... an entity that's far greater than anything in the, that we know in the world much less whatever we know about the universe. The thing of the uh, the thing about the unfathomable is this. If you stare for long into it, it'll also stare into you. And any information that you can glean from the nothingness yet everythingness that is the unfathomable without going mad it's a piece of information introduced into the world that may help us in our quest. How likely is it that people don't go mad from that? Oh, it's very, 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 very... But the thing is... It's not impossible. That's the thing about chaos. There's a chance for everything. No matter how small. While you are having this cool. conversation as well, real quick, are you? Yep. Are you? Um, is this just you sitting at the at the campfire? Do you still mm -hmm. want to have the mushroom person corpse thing do anything, uh, or is this just you two uh, kind of hashing out ideas? And I'm pretty uh, sure it's just us talking, and the mushroom man is just going to lie down. Well, do you want the mushroom <laughs> man just, to lie down? He's just standing there. Yeah, he's because just I haven't told right him to now. do yeah. anything else. <laughs> yes. Um. Selene is noting noting these uh, little musings that she's had down as well. It's like, I am aware that, you know, the things that I say might make me sound like a madwoman most days, but... A lot of the time, actually. But here's the thing. About matters such as these, about the larger picture, when have I been wrong? I can't prove you not wrong. Exactly. That doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> no, it does. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right. But the thing is, is that you can't prove that I'm wrong. <laughs> that seems like a convenient statement. Very, no, very convenient. It's, a, it, it's not really. Con it's not so much convenient as it is the nature of the beast that we fight with. Creator, I can't, this I woman can't... seems to be causing you distress, you feel in your mind. Would you have me escort her away, Creator? No. No. Go lay down. Go away. And I do say that out loud. I He's can't... not thinking about it. Creator, I can't go away if I lay down first. Which would, which would you have me do? Go away, then lay down, and uh, just stop talking to me. Please, please, just stop talking to me. Celine, you're seeing Mordecai <laughs> kind of uh, flash some color. Celine just, and then the Celine mushroom just person pets Mordecai on the head like that. And the mushroom person just 
you. Turns and so. starts walking out to the distance. Yeah, no. Celine so just pets him on the head like that. Uh, you'll get used to command. You'll get used to commanding trolls eventually. No, I don't want to. I don't want to command thralls. That's the point. Ah, uh, but such a, but reality is rarely so agreeable that you get what you want. Uh, after it gets a short a short distance away from you, it's it turns once more. Um, not that it's speaking verbally, but it, it turns and it, it glows colors and uh, as it seems to be how it communicates that you see Celine. Creator, how far shall I go away before laying down? <laughs> Why is it calling me creator? Because you're the one who made it. No, I you are didn't. Its creator. No, I didn't. You drank of the blood from the mushrooms. So technically speaking, you you implanted the the spores into this thing and made it rise. You are its creator, just as I am the creator of any zombie or skeleton that I make by touching a corpse. Mm. And I just shoot back to it right there is fine, just lay down. Okay, it's laying down about 30 feet away from you then. It just kind of... <laughs> knees, then face first. Trust me, you never get used to how unsettling that is. You seem to be pretty un pretty unfazed by it most most days, yeah. Is this satisfying, Look. creator? Would stop talking. Would stop talking. To me? <laughs> stop. Celine, stop. stop talking to me. Just stop. Okay. <laughs> Celine just bursts into laughter. It's like, oh, Mordecai, Mordecai, Mordecai. Whatever are we do going to do to with you? Do they talk to you? Do they talk to you? They can sometimes. In your head? Yeah. That's unsettling. I don't like it. Make it go away. Unfortunately, that I can't do. I am a man. I am a woman of many talents. Mm -hmm. That is not one of them. Make it go away. <laughs> so is just giggling giggling to herself and putting notes down this is not funny this is not fun oh oh contraire Mordecai this is absolutely hilarious you're an ass now Mordecai darling whenever did I say that I'm a nice person I wanted a nice girl. <laughs> no! <laughs> I know. I know. But as I said, rarely is reality so agreeable that we get what we want. I mean, to me, I just wanted to, I just wanted to live in my hut and play with my cadavers, but I wasn't allowed to do that, so... As I said, we don't get what we want. Is this we what must... you want? I mean, no technicality. You are a cadaver. That's gross. I'm walking <laughs> away now. <laughs> Silly, Silly just burst out laughing. She's like, I don't mean like that. <laughs> He's just walking away. My mind out of the gutter, please, Mordecai. But what what I mean is that. Reality is ever so agreeable that we get the exact things that we want, so we must be willing to make compromises. I mean, she takes off her mask. Look at me. You're still pretty. And I walk away. <laughs> Certainly just slides her mask back on. But she's blushing a little bit underneath it. Uh, so, Mor <laughs> so Mordecai is, uh, <laughs> Mordecai's taking a, a walk and, uh, just, what, out in the fields at night? Get some, mm. get some air you don't need to breathe? If he was, if he could blush, he would be blushing right now? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we can say your, your luminescence, uh, I mean, you're probably, like, blushing, like, kind of on your forehead and a little bit on your throat, <laughs> uh, instead of your cheeks, but it works. You just gotta, 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 gotta look at yourself like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just uh, gonna take a uh, tape. Uh, well, continue to take notes on Kazumi's current condition. 
Uh, okay, so you're... Asking quiet questions to Peggy Sue. It's like, how, how empty is it in there at the moment? Uh, okay, so you you are leaving the... You're, you're leaving the, the dead corpse, the not dead corpse, and then you're you're leaving those two behind. Mordecai's out uh, taking a stroll, and you're going to go over and just like look at Casimir, kind of take notes like, on take notes on eyes, Casimir's condition nose, and ask Peggy. throat kind of a, like yeah a... and and ask and ask Peggy Sue some questions. Um. Okay. Uh. So Casimir, you are getting uh you're getting an examination. Um. You know, turn your head and cough, kind of a thing, and uh, go ahead and. Uh, what are you asking? I mean, you can see Peggy Sue in Casimir's, uh, you can see Peggy Sue in Casimir's ear. Uh, she's just kind of hanging out, singing a, a very, a very beautiful song, uh, for a, a cold, a cold spring night. Uh, the, the, crip, uh, the cricket's just making some nice music. It's there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking back through the Twitch chat because I've got it because I've got it open. And some of it's gold. Um, well, as, as, in general, are you just observing the cricket or? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, just observing the cricket and asking okay. asking Peggy Sue some questions. Anything in particular? Not, not that I get answers. It's well, just a matter yeah. of. It's nice to talk to someone now that Mordecai's gone off and... Peggy Sue at least responds to being addressed, though you can't understand yeah. what Peggy Sue is saying. All right, are, That's are, fine. are you casting any spells? Because it sounded like at least before. I, I don't know if you're satisfied now, but are you casting any spells? Oh, I, 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 was, I was thinking of casting out of my dead, but now I'll, I'll, I'll leave that as... It. Wait for Brighton and Jacob to get back so that I can create a restoration Casimir. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mordecai, you are out for a walk. Uh, Jacob and Bright, um, you come flapping down. It's, uh, it's not super late at night, but it's definitely, it's definitely past your bedtimes. And, um, you find, uh, you find the camp because you followed the, you followed the road. You could actually see, um, that sinkhole that opened up. The mushrooms were glowing faintly and you could see it pretty well from the, from the night sky. Um, where, where the water was. Um, but, you know, it just shows that you're following the trail that the Fomorians had left behind. Um, and, uh, in fact, can each of you give me a perception? Saw! Yes, saw! Oh, that's us. Okay. Fifteen. I'm not Four, very seven. perceptive. Okay. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah, so, Jacob, you see that the, the sinkhole that you had encountered before... Uh, has a faint glow because there was uh, mushrooms that were inside where the waterway was, and you're told apparently the Fae talked through it or some other stuff like that. Um, but you're on the right you're on the right track um, to to get out to the oh. the big brush pile, and sure enough, there's a dark patch, and uh, just beyond is a little little kind of smoldering campfire. Um, go ahead and make uh, each of you can make another perception check when you're arriving towards camp. Well, thankfully, I have my father's eyes, and you can't have them. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, um, both of you, both of you see, uh, as you're arriving, like, out, out of good ways, I mean, just a couple hundred feet away, um, a very dimly lit, colorful light is just sort of, like, out in the fields. And then there's a very faintly glowing uh, thing also closer to camp, um, a little bit away from the campfire. And uh, then there's uh, Celine and Casimir. Uh, Celine seems to be looking inside Casimir's ear. Um, well, Jacob, if you don't mind, I'd like to fly over and check out the, the pretty color thing. You have the reins. Okay, that's good. That means you get to control the stereo. But I still want to fly over and check out the, the brightly colored thing. Stereo? What do you mean, knob? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Maybe in Greenfield they, they, they call it riding heavy have. crossbow. <laughs> we got shot with a crossbow? What? 
Uh, all right, so you're, you're going to swoop over the uh, the glowing thing in the fields? Yes? Oh. Uh, are you muted? Are we, are we good? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, I mean, oh, you faded out for a minute, but I think I'm okay now. Okay, yep. Uh, so, uh, Mordecai, there's a... Fw, 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 as uh, a shape in the sky gets closer, and uh, sure enough, there's Jasper. Uh, with uh, a, a pink-haired, uh, a pink-haired gnome, and um, a man, uh, a man whose head uh, shines like the moon, because that's the light uh, that's reflected from it, and uh, they come swooping hey. down. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, so the brightly colored thing was Mordecai this whole time. Uh, it would seem so. Oh. So. So that's interesting. Well, let's fly over the other, the other Mordecai, thing. Mordecai, you're quick. positively glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit, that, that, that. <laughs> uh, so if I, if he, Mr. If Silverleaf, you're positively glowing. Uh, if he says that to me, I'm heading back. All right. Yeah, that's fine. You, you can start heading back. Jasper does. Uh, and as you approach the camp, uh, I mean, Selene, <laughs> you... Uh, you hear uh, Jasper approach with heavy beating wings, um, a, a little bit of a uh, li little bit of a breeze kind of foo, goes through your hair. Uh, Casimir kind of foo, gets some dust on his face, doesn't seem to react. Um, and uh, as as you take a look at this other thing, it is one of the corpses, not where it was left, but it is uh, face down and slightly uh, in the mushrooms. Uh, the mushrooms growing out of it are slightly uh, glowing, uh, similar colors to Mordecai. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Jasper, why don't you go ahead and, and land uh, over here by Celine and Casimir? And then, uh, so, hey, Celine, did you know that one of the corpses is glowing? Yes, uh, about that. <laughs> the Fae have worked with the vampires and figured out a way to seed corpses such as they can command them. That's oh an God. interesting conclusion to draw. From the fact that one of the corpses is glowing? Oh, no, 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 no. I got Mordecai to move it. Like, command it to stand up, walk over, and lie back down. That's when Mordecai is walking closer to the camp. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's not a theoretical conclusion. That's the facts. Right, but that doesn't tell us anything <laughs> about fae and vampires. It just means that Mordecai has mushroom powers, which isn't a surprise because he's half mushroom now until he eats some more blood. And then, um, so he just used his mushroom spores to make the body, like, mushroomify and get up and do things. Yes, that but doesn't that tell us mean... anything about fae and vampires. Well, what, well, what that means is that the fae are also capable of such things, considering he drank fae bud to become like that. Well, I mean, we kind of knew that anyway, because of what happened in Green Shield. But that doesn't mean that they worked with the vampires to do it. it I was that under is the true, impression but the, that, that they kind of magic are rivals. They have no interest in working with one another. So what has changed that well, could even support your hypothesis? The return of the Fomorians. One. I think that's why we need to track down the Fomorians as quick as we can. Speaking of, I got my stuff, so that's nice. And also, um, we brought the... Th well, I haven't actually seen it, so it could just be sawdust, for all I know. But Jacob has a, a box of stuff that he says is diamond dust. Oh, you got the diamond dust? Is that not the reason we left in the first place? Yes, we got the diamond dust. We managed to get your entire hair... <laughs> the church to be able to provide food for at least a hair a couple of more weeks to have the hungry that are left to hair behind we ended up managing to end up convincing the hair uh, the inn to end up here having a donation given to your uh, particular church and we ended up confirming that apparently your uh Subordinates, including uh, well, he goes through his notes for a second. Um, the revealer has turned into some form of violent, otherworldly individual. I am led to believe these are the said Fomorians that we are yes. currently chasing down. Um, yes. but it was only those of the cloth um, that would end up there meeting a whole bunch there. A merchant by the name of Mr. Morden 
um, yes. owned a market and ended up uh, taking in produce from Green Shield. One of the heavy sellers was, in fact, the well, the mushrooms that were uh, grown from there ever since they uh, sprouted out in Grain Shield, implying that that's how they ended up getting to the city in the first place. And the mushrooms ended up uh, going on sale. They ended up seeming to have grown into the creatures that we end up behaving. And that individual, he points over to the one corpse, is Mr. Morden. Oh. Oh, I see. I presume that Mr. Morden is here, here, was killed inside of his shop or uh, possessed by one of these things at that point. Most likely possessed. Well, it decided to end up here occupying his brain case. So I would suppose so. Yes. I, uh. This bodes absolutely poorly. Because if what you're saying is correct, then. The Frey are spreading their influence through produce, which Is means that... the food, uh, which means the food chain, the food supply, throughout probably the entirety of Mesomasca is at now this... probably crawling with Fey. Well, at this point, we can only confirm that it's mushrooms and those who have grown from Green Shield. Can you think of any other place that ended up growing heavy amounts of produce that would be shipped around that you know uh... are Fey occupied? Not produce, but... Well, oh, browbeat, uh, browbeat was an exporter of ores and the like, but the Fae had yeah, set themselves up a quarry. Mine. <clears throat> yes, that's a different yeah, yeah, aspect. Oh, perhaps they can end up here... Yeah. Well, I mean, if they find mush if they mm. find mushrooms in the mine that are edible, there would be no, re no reason why they wouldn't just cut them out and export them as produce. Was so there any produce them? that I may have run across that came from Browbeat? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I'd i say not definitively. Uh, Fair uh, enough. There's really no produce that Browbeat itself would export, um, even I if they grew so, mushrooms but... in their caves, because they're more of an importer of, uh, of produce because they export uh, gravel, uh, chiseled rock, quarried, uh, quarried yeah. materials. Uh, precious they, they gems and minerals. Ore and, yeah, yeah. They, they're they're a, they're a mining ex produce okay. expert. Um, but I mean, so... if I had to if I had to make extra money, there's no reason why someone might some intrepid person might have carved some of them up from the mines and some traveled around selling them. There's always a chance, uh, but especially with the small dwarven population that lives there. Uh, now, of course, dwarves are are very rare all throughout Mesotopia, but in in that town, there's a higher percentage of them. But of course, a lot of dwarves would use uh, underground grown produce in their cooking. So a lot of it probably wouldn't leave for that reason, because the dwarves would want to either grow it uh, and or just consume it and not necessarily sell it. Uh, yeah. to, so they wouldn't find it. It, 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 would only, it would only be if they found more dwarves that they'd export. And even then, it'd probably only Think be for them. What kind of produce grows well underground? Mushrooms. Mushrooms and other fungus uh, and things of that nature. Which are very obviously contaminated from what we've seen. Okay, so from I want to send. Shield, uh... Yeah, so I want to send another message. This is my last spell for today, except for little ones. Um, I'm going to send a message to the gnomes that run the gnomish restaurant that was so nice, and I'm going to say, um, "Hello, it's bright again. Um, we were wondering if anyone, if there's been a a lot of demand for." mushrooms lately and if so where you're getting them and maybe you should not sell them okay that's 25 words <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm, that is yeah uh, uh i mean celine would have those notes actually so she'll she will she will be another like i want to find out if i get a message back well um, crystal you do mushroom. not get a message back let me let me make sure I'm I'm giving the proper the proper response to this. Um they can send a message back if they so desire, but they don't have to. Right. But Oh hey No uh, Celine Celine um thinks for a few moments it is like mushrooms grow underground 
Browbeat had a fair problem as well, but they're a mining exporter, but ores and gems and the like are also underground. And when we were finding all of those people possessed by the Fae, they were encased in crystal. And it's very obvious that they like to travel, use their information to travel via those waterways, which we saw back in the sinkhole back there and in Browby. So they're using underground, mostly underground methods as vectors to enter the world. Or at least from what this is what we've seen. That's just from the evidence that we have. But yeah, so I'll, I'll 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 continue on that little note in a moment. But for now, though, uh, Jacob, you got me that uh, diamond dust, yes? Eddie, can you resolve my my thing first? Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. I was looking to see what might cause ascending to go off, not be received, or fizzle. Uh, in the case, uh, it, it looks like the only thing that it, would cause it to... It's not ever planar. supposed to fizzle. It's yeah, different unless they're on a different plane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Different plane of, uh, yeah, different plane of existence. Um, is sending a divination spell? No. No? Well, uh, well in that case, yeah, no, it's, it would just be... Um, yeah, um, okay, your... Oh, anti-magic anti field would be the other. Yeah, your one. Like spear all that stuff but... your sending goes off but you don't get a reply yeah um that that is, that is a bad thing it that... means they will receive the message but they don't have to respond uh, uh, they don't have to respond uh there could be magical interference uh the target could either not be on the plane of existence or perhaps alive uh or also because it's like 3 a.m the target could also just be asleep I didn't realize yeah. it was that late. Okay, well, um, that's okay. I mean, I'm just I'm gonna go to bed soon anyway. So okay, it'll check. I'll its try them again in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think sending works that way. <laughs> it just it just waits. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, that'd be so annoying difference. you wake up and five five messages all all from the night just pour into your brain <laughs> there's a difference belt us in brain mail I've, I've been thinking about it <laughs> yeah uh, lethality do you have to get going to gathering and nerds real quick uh i will i will yes okay um <laughs> then before you have to go is there anything else that you want to either posit uh, or to cast or experiment then before... I mean, because we're together, we're presuming we're sharing information. Um, so to, to make um, it quick for you, is there anything... He, that... uh, he'll, he'll Casimir and then continue to share information about uh, the phase uh, the phase vectors and the kinds of things that Mordecai and Selene were discussing. Oh, yeah. Before yeah, we... uh, Brighton Jacob showed up. Yeah, but the main did... thing is healing Casimir. Casimir back on his feet, that will make the side RP easier if we decide to do that. Yeah, okay. because then we could just do the positing in side sure. RP. Uh, will you roll a uh, spell casting check? So this would just be a wisdom check, please. Wisdom check? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that advantage hasn't been used, has it? No. Then I'm going to be taking it. Okay. Go for it. All right. Um. I mean, good thing, <laughs> just to make sure. Okay. Uh, so, Casimir, uh, you uh, you are a part of a ritual that Selene is conducting, um, sprinkling a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, saying a few words, um, and uh, the spell Greater Restoration uh, goes off, and uh, you find yourself waking up when you've already been awake. You... It's super weird. And I return your intelligence back to whatever it is it was. Everything that has happened since you blanked is not in your brain. Mm -hmm. Also, a cricket leaps out of your ear. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that was that was, that? Uh, that was that was just Peggy Sue. Um, yeah. She well, usually lives in my hair, but instead yep, um, she was living in your ear for a while. Yeah, right. But, figure out a way to back and stay in my hair while you didn't have a uh, while you uh, didn't have a intellect. You, okay, you guys, so, you talk too fast. Hold uh, on. What? I have to clean off your earwax. Just a minute. Okay, <laughs> there she's better now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? 
And then I think... Peggy Sue was driving you. Yeah. She was piloting your body while you didn't have a brain. And, uh... It's tough. A, a, a nice cheerful there. cricket tune from uh, Bright's direction. When did it get so dark? It's uh, nice. when, did we, when did we get up here? There's also two it's corpses. It's been several here, hours. And one of them is glowing faintly and has mushrooms <clears> on his head. We haven't moved. There's currently a standing glowing mushroom who just told you we haven't moved. There's that too. <laughs> yeah. We'll do some it's... explanation. Just suspend your disbelief for a moment. I think, though, that maybe we should also, like, um, like just camp here and do the Liam and Tiny Hut thing here, too. To... I ritual cast it and stuff. Yeah, because then we could side up here, positive information, and then, like, have to sleep until day. And okay. then get on the road. Uh, then, uh, as this is cast, uh, is there any other interactions uh, that, you know, that aren't going to be role-played in the, in the hut? But Mordecai, are you doing anything with uh, with your your mushroom boy or with uh, the corpse or anyone else? Uh, nope, right. they are staying exactly where they are. I don't want them. Okay. <laughs> uh, then, uh, Bright or Jacob, are you doing anything with either of the corpses or anything that can't be role played or uh, done on the side? No, oh, I'm. I don't want to talk to the corpses. Okay. I might want to talk to Celine, but not the corpses. Okay. And we could do Jacob? that. That'll be. Anything from Jacob? I think, I think he's trying to think. Okay. Uh, Casimir, Selene, and Mordecai, uh, Bright has a beautiful uh, jasper feather kind of woven into her hair. Very expertly oh, done. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Jacob did that for me. It was very nice. I didn't know that you could do hair like that, Jacob. Yeah, it's a thing it's that... love considering you have none. That the Jade used to sometimes do. But oh, I guess yeah. Jacob can do it too. I've never done that before. And I haven't well, done it yet. Oh. Wait, you, you, wait, right, you said it was like how Jade used to do, right? I mean, sometimes she would do things like that for me. Only sometimes, we watched, though. We watched her do her hair once, remember? Yeah. Yeah, but she well, had yeah. to be in, she had to be in just the right mood. Then we've got then, then we've got quite a large amount to posit on before we go to sleep tonight. Uh <laughs> I prefer to sleep first and talk in the morning. I'm very tired. All right. Spend a lot of time that's, flying. That's, that's fair enough. We'll talk in the morning. Um fair. Excuse me, I need to wash my face. Uh, he right. has this completely blank look as he starts to walk away. Um, looking for a puddle or a yeah, uh, search. Mordecai, cause... you found a pond that you could reflect in uh, <clears throat> over over at the base of the hill over here that you can direct. I'm not letting them go alone. I'm gonna pop the 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 hut when I when we get back. But okay, sure. Uh, Jacob, you want a glowing guide? He'll take you to a pond at the base of the hill. I'm gonna need a few minutes. You can. I'll be all right. Uh, I'll be fine, Mr. Silverleaf. I just need a moment. I won't be far if you need something. You're a good deputy, you know that? I try. Yeah. He starts to walk somberly. And he gets to the pool. And then looks at the reflection as he looks down he murmurs to himself am I going crazy am I going mad dealing with and criminals he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a yellow bit of cloth looks at it with a kind of a memory and 
Why did they talk about you like they knew who the hell you were? Everything they say doesn't make any sense. It's not, none of it adds up. Are they playing me for a fool? They're just trying to twist what's inside. And did they just hear something? And he's just in against me. What is going on? Looks into the pool. Tell me what is going on. Jacob had a bad day today. It was hard for him at the at the market. I don't know what happened to him there, but someone should go after him. Give him uh, a minute more. or two. More, more I, didn't, time, more I didn't go very far. I I gave him space, but I tailed behind him, sort of. Yeah, Mord Mordecai will deal with it. He's the uh, he's really the speaker amongst us. It's All really right. funny because aside aside uh, you Mordecai, I'm pretty sure I actually have the highest charisma in the party. And uh, what we'll do is, in this moment where the, the party... I mean, it's party split, but not split split. Jacob is reflecting in a dark pool. Mordecai is a ways away, but uh, even with the, the breeze of a spring evening, you can you might even be able to hear a little bit of what he's speaking as he's looking, as you are super keen with your senses. Bright and... Uh, with a uh, pet reunited with Peggy Sue, Casimir reunited with his brain, and uh, Celine full of uh, <laughs> questions and answers alike. Uh, one begets the other in this infinite loop. We will leave you here. Um, the, I'm putting the hut up just as a because you know, when you get back, but we will will stop the session with the two with the groups split as they are, with some over here. No, all right, well, anyway, some over there and then some back at the hut here. Um. And, well, I wouldn't uh, be able to pop the hut until I got back. Right, so. right. Well, at, at the location. I, so. I'll trust that uh, it's going to be fairly brief, and we'll That's continue fine. with the hut. And, and, and we, you can uh, side RP if you want. Inside RP yeah. if you want, or uh, me and Coffee can voice it out and just have a quick set on our own. That's, either way. I'm better at yeah. that, so. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we'll call the session here. Uh, lethality, uh, real quick before you go, what is the level yep. and the prompt for your one shot tonight with Gathering of Dice? Uh, the, uh, so the prompt is Gremlins, and the level is four. Ooh. All right, remember, don't get them wet and don't feed them after midnight. <laughs> midnight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some some good uh, low-level Gribbly hunts or something. All right, I, I look forward uh, yeah. to this. So I, hope, I, hope, I hope we fight a lot of goblins. Yeah, it's, I'm hoping for a lot of goblins. Yeah, it's after one o'clock here, so no feeding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is, that is, that is, that is fast. True. Um, true. Alrighty. Well, in that case, I am going to get going so I can print this yep. off and get everything set up for, uh, for about 40 minutes to an hour or so. Yep, we'll look for your signal flare, and I, I will look yep. to see if Jackbox 6 is available because we'll play some party games until then. You know, it should be, because it's after midnight in Pacific time, so Ooh, yeah, it, it should be available. We could be some of the first. Alrighty, um... Alright, then... Alrighty, yeah. uh... Yeah, no, good uh, Good game, everyone, and I will, uh, if uh, we don't do anything inside RP, I will see you guys, um, if not in an hour, the next week. Okay. Bye. Later.